everybody welcome back to part 12 of the 132 scale uh, mosquito kit from Tamiya. Uh, this time I'm going to be finishing off the Bombay area, get the bomb racks built and fitted. There's one or two bits and pieces that I omitted to fit uh, earlier on in the build in the Bombay. Uh, so a bit of retro work there. Uh, and I want to really just finish off the underside of the fuselage if I can. So I'm going to start off by catching up with one or two of those pieces that I've missed from earlier on in the build. So we'll get the camera over and we'll uh, make a start this week. Okay, I'm starting off this week with doing a bit of catch up on something that I've missed out earlier on in the build. Uh, and that's these uh, frames here across the front of the radiator. Uh, they provided as stainless steel parts in the Tamiya kit and I forgot to fit them when I came to build the wing uh, a couple of episodes ago, maybe three or four episodes ago. Uh, but the oversight was pointed out by Mark who left a comment uh, on that video to ask why I hadn't fitted it. And of course I hadn't fitted it because I hadn't been paying attention to the instructions. That's the honest answer. So I'm putting that right now by putting them in place. It's not possible to fit them afterwards once you've joined the wing without a bit of modification. So this is the other part that I've got to fit. And originally there are two holes in this mounting plate here and one on the other side which goes over two pins on the upper part of the wing on the inside but obviously you can't get that in now so what I've had to do is just cut the hole into a slot at the back there so I can slide this in from the front now and use the pins just to guide it into the correct position so it's a bit of a save but I didn't want to leave them off because you can see into the radiators as you can see from the front. So these just need a bit of gentle persuasion to go into position. There we are, situation rescued. I think it's worth bothering with those, it just adds a little bit to the radiators and you will look at the front of the aircraft. So anyway, all's well that ends well. The other thing that I've done at this stage in terms of going back a little bit on the build is to fix the wheels into place. So that's been done by just dropping a little bit of extra thin super glue into the axle just on both sides of the wheels. And just before it's got time to set up, just placing the model on a flat surface and getting all three wheels uh, with the wheel flats uh, level with the ground. So they're all secure now. They're not going to go anywhere, including the tail wheel. And uh, we can move on from there. So the next thing I want to do is to build up the bomb racks. Uh, we did some work last week uh, in the Bombay area with the 20mm cannon pack and I want to try and finish off that area if I can. So uh, we've got a pair of bombs to fit in here, two 500 pounders. But I'll start with the racks themselves. We also have some stainless steel pieces to fit as well. So we'll just give these a good clean up. So 
Okay, let's uh, get some of these together now. There's still a bit of a seam line on there, so just a bit more work to do. And there are the uh, two racks, just three parts to that, there's nothing to it. But uh, the bomb rack mounts, I just need to be a bit more careful about this to make sure we get these stainless steel parts orientated properly. Okay, so after a bit of uh, fiddling around there, the racks go in properly on the mounting. Next I'll build the bombs. So we have uh, four 500 pounders, two in the bomb bay and two under the wings. I might as well make all four together. I'll just put the wing ones aside for the moment. I'm not going to clean these up completely, the bomb halves, because I prefer to do that afterwards once the cement has set. I'm just going to leave those to one side for a day, just to make sure that uh, the glue's set. It should be. I've used the quick drying Tamiya liquid cement, so they should be okay in the morning to sand down and clean up. I think I'll uh, leave the rings off for the moment till they're all cleaned up and ready. Uh, we've got some decals to fit to these uh, and I think I might put a bit of a surface texture onto them. They're very smooth at the moment so I might just improve them a little bit with some Mr. Surfacer dabbed on just to roughen the uh, body of the bomb up a little bit. I'll leave the uh, tail cone and the fins smooth but the actual body of the bomb, I think I'll rough that up a bit. This is just checking the fit of the bomb rack mount into the bay and it appears to be all right. Yep, that's okay. There's one or two other little bits of detail that I need to work on in here. Uh, there's a couple of parts uh, in the area of the gun pack that I missed out. So again I'm going to have to catch up with those as well. So all those little parts that I've missed off I'll catch up with those as well now and then hopefully we can get the Bombay area sealed off by uh, fitting the side panels, the side bulkheads so I'll get these parts primed up, get them painted and we can come back to the aeroplane and get them fitted. With the components here with just a basic coat of paint, silver and black, I'm just going to bring them to life a little bit with some 
uh, dry brushing and a bit of shading on the bomb rack mount here. This is a bit of uh, panel line accent colour, Tammy's panel line accent colour. This is the uh, black version. They do uh, several greys, browns and this black. I'm not sure we're going to be able to see any of this, but it's that old saying, you know it's there. You might just catch a glimpse of it, so it's just worth spending a few minutes doing this. That'll do. Don't have to go overboard with that. The black pieces, so the bomb racks and these two uh, boxes, which I'm not sure what they are, I'll just give those a dry brush with some uh, rubber black. This is XF85. There is a lacquer paint equivalent as well. So uh, these have had a coat of semi gloss black. And the rubber black will just highlight the details a little bit. The other colour that I use occasionally uh, on black items for dry brushing is German grey. That brings the highlights up a little bit more. The rubber black is uh, a bit darker than the uh, German grey obviously so it doesn't quite highlight the parts as much. This is a very subtle effect, it's not going to show up on camera I don't think. It's literally just catching the edges and a little bit of the nut and bolt detail on these racks. The rubber black's basically just catching the edges and that gives the effect of light catching the edge of the part. So it just accentuates the shape I suppose. I'll be covering this up with a bomb, so it might seem a big waste of time. But uh, I like dry brushing. It's, uh, I think I said in the last episode, it's uh, one of my favourite parts of building. The other benefit it has, uh, apart from the colour effect, is that it just smooths a part out as well. It uh, gets rid of any loose pieces of uh, dust or hair or whatever that's got into the paint just scrubs that off and it just smartens the part up an awful lot so I like doing this stage on most of the parts that I use on the aeroplane it's um, especially effective I think on black painted parts because you just lose all the detail in black it just obscures everything so this little trick of catching the edges just brings the shape of the part out again. Okay, that'll do. I'm only going to do one of these bombs because I've uh, sent away for some replacements. There's quite a bit of detail missing on the Tamiya bombs. So I've sent for some resin and etched brass replacements from MDC in the UK. And they should be with me uh, in a couple of days, two or three days time. So it might miss this week's episode, but I'm going to paint one of these up to see what the Tamiya uh, part looks like. And then next week probably we'll compare it with the MDC bombs and see whether it's worth uh, adding the extra detail to them. So there's no 
uh, fuse on the end. There are two lifting lugs, this particular bomb, uh, which the MC500 bomb in the RAF was just had a single lifting lug on it, so uh, that needs a bit of change as well. And hopefully the uh, MDC bombs will be a little bit better. They were fairly cheap, they were only £3 per bomb, so 12 for the full set of ordnance. And on a model costing, what, £200 now in the UK, something like that. It's not that much to add, and although the Bombay bombs aren't that visible, obviously when the aeroplane's on display, the two wing-mounted bombs are, so uh, I think it's worth uh, upgrading them, or at least we'll see next week if it's worth upgrading them. And I'll probably do a little bit of a review and build of the MDC bombs uh, when they arrive. So the first job is to get this mounting for the bomb rack in. So we'll bring the aeroplane over and get that done first of all. I just need to rearrange the bench a bit because it's so big a model that it takes up a lot of space and you've got to handle it carefully now because of the uh, parts that we've added. Okay we'll get these parts on the aeroplane now. Because I'm working on the underside, I've just put this pad on the upper surfaces. And that's because when I turn the aeroplane over on the bench, I'm not going to be catching the top of the pilot seat or the navigator's bulkhead. Uh, which I've already broken this off once and had to replace it. So uh, that'll just keep the actual model off the bench. First thing I'm going to fit is the bomb rack mount. Put the racks on now. Just making sure that they're parallel and level. So just a little bit of adjustment on there. Give myself a bit of an awkward task here with these that should have gone on much earlier in the build. I've skipped ahead too far in the instructions. This uh, duct here, or hose, uh, is connected to this big duct, which I fitted last week. And I was wrong in what I thought that was. I thought it was a compressed air duct. But someone pointed out to me uh, that actually it was probably uh, a hot air duct from the starboard engine, which was to heat the guns or to prevent them freezing up at altitude. 
uh, and I'm pretty sure that that must be right. It makes perfect sense. The, uh, it also makes sense that we've got this hose that I've just fitted here from the warm air duct to the underside of the cockpit. So it's probably just an offshoot of the uh, warm air ducts uh, to provide cabin heating as well. I'm assuming that that's the same, I don't know for sure. So that's the uh, front end of the bomb bay done and the bomb racks put in. Next I'm going to turn my attention to these side walls that uh, fit here. So we've got these two parts in the Tamiya kit. And they're just fit in at the side, but they do have quite a bit of detailing on them. Which I'll go ahead and sort out now and we can get them painted up and fitted. So this is the section of the Tamiya instructions dealing with the side panels. And as you can see, we've got some options to have the bomb bay uh, fully closed up. So you're basically just putting a plate on the bomb bay opening. You can have half the bomb bay open, which means that really you're opening the area of the bombs and you're covering the gun pack up, which is a shame to do. I'm having mine fully open, so I've got to go with this option here and the detailing is a bit more, you're just adding a little bit more uh, of the hinge detail and so on uh, for the open option. So this is the one that we're going to be going for. We've got a little bit of modification to do. A couple of little moulding pips to remove. I'm just checking for ejector pin marks as well, but there's nothing really to be too worried about. The ejector pin mouldings in the kit, uh, where they exist, they're very, very shallow and take virtually no time at all to clean up. The reason why I spend time on them is because if you're doing a wash, which I do on these parts, the wash will go into the ejector pin mark if you don't remove it. And it just accentuates that it's there even though they're so fine. If I weren't using a wash, maybe I'd be a bit less bothered about it, but you can see how easy it is to get them removed. It's virtually no time at all. And some of them, uh, there's one here, you're not going to be able to see, it's so fine. But it's actually underneath a location point, I think, for one of the hinges. So uh, it's very good engineering, it's thoughtful engineering from Tamiya. You get uh, some kits, I'm sure you've come across them, where you just wonder what the designers were thinking of when they're placing the ejector pins. put them in the most inconvenient places but not on this one. The outer panel on this side we have to remove some detail it's just a, an access panel and a vent here that has to come off we've got it repeated at the back so Tommy I've obviously molded this in such a way that different versions can be produced. Okay, so they're all ready. The mods that Tommy wants us to do are straightforward enough. So we'll now set about fitting all the hinges and so on that we need to on these fully open doors. These are going to be fairly fragile, we're going to have to be careful with these once they're on the model.
You might have noticed in the past that when I assemble some of these bits and pieces, I'll hold them in place with tweezers whilst I'm using this super thin Tamiya glue, the quick setting glue. And the reason for that is it's so thin that if you're holding the part, even if you're very careful, it can sometimes wick onto your fingers and then you end up transferring the cement to uh, places that you don't want on the rest of the piece. So holding it with the tweezers like that, it just prevents the uh, glue spreading too far. I'm doing all these ribs separately because they look very similar and I'm sure that uh, if I cut them all off the sprue together that I'd get them mixed up or there's a chance of getting them mixed up. Got to have your wits about you with these brackets, I'm sure that they'll only fit in one place. But even so, I'm just being careful to get the right one. We've now got some more uh, photo etch to fit from the stainless steel in the Tamiya kit. This part uh, fits here on the back, but it's painted black, whereas the rest of the assembly is in interior green. So I'm going to paint that separately. But when you look at this, it's some sort of connection point for some pipes, probably hydraulic lines. And it just uh, reminds you that you could really go to town on this if you wanted to add extra detail. Uh, add all these hydraulic lines into the model but uh, I'm not going to do that I've not done it in the cockpit either there's lots of detail extra that you could add into the cockpit and it's something that I've learned over the last four or five years really it's one of the most valuable lessons I've learned in modeling is to know when to add detail and when not to and it is a balance. Sometimes you can just get completely bogged down, add in detail and get bored with the model. Uh, you see it all the time on internet forums where people start off uh, with the photograph of the kit and God knows how many uh, accessory detail parts. Etch, brass, resin, all sorts of stuff, books, magazines all sorts of reference and the build comes to nothing. We start off a few weeks and you can tell that the models just got completely bogged down and you never hear from it again. And if I start a build on YouTube, I'm gonna make sure that I finish it. I don't want people starting to watch a series and then it just fizzle into nothing. I don't think it's fair on the viewer. So I balance my effort 
with something like this and in this particular case I've chosen not to uh, add that extra detail in. There'll be pr plenty of reference available to do it if you wanted to but uh, I'd rather see a finished model on the shelf and a finished uh, YouTube playlist than, uh, than not. So these parts are all ready for some uh, primer and the usual painting sequence of the interior green a gloss varnish in preparation for an enamel uh, weathering wash flat coat and then the dry brushing just to highlight these details so I'll start the first of those processes off now and get these primed the panels have had a coat of XF71 which is cockpit green uh, and a coat of gloss clear as well uh, again a Tamiya acrylic gloss clear I'm now going to use some Tamiya Paneline accent colour. I've been using black uh, on the rest of the model so for consistency I'm going to carry on. On reflection I would have probably used brown had I had it at the time when I started the kit but I didn't. So I don't want to change course just now. It looks quite stark when you first put this black on but actually it dries out quite a lot and fades so it's not quite as stark as it looks at this stage. After a bit of drying time, just uh, a cotton bud moistened with some uh, thinners. Actually this is white spirit and it didn't occur to me actually that uh, it's an English term, white spirit. I had a question asking what it meant from uh, someone in America I think it was. Uh, the equivalent of uh, in the US is mineral spirits as far as I understand. It's more or less the same thing. But in the UK we call it white spirit. I'm just getting rid of the excess there just makes the surface nice and grimy. It spreads a little bit of the black wash onto the panels so that it just generally dirties things up a bit. Okay, and the last step of this process is some dry brushing. For this I'm using XF76, which is a grey-green colour. Look what I've done to my favourite dry brushing brush snapped off. I'm not throwing it away though, it's one of my favourites. The dry brushing is done after a coat of flat varnish. I just find that the dry brushing grips a little bit better onto a flat varnish rather than a gloss surface.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and fitted these side panels in place. And here I've run into, or I ran into, the first uh, problematic fit, let's call it that, uh, in the kit. And that's because whilst we've got some nice solid fixings down at the bottom where the uh, side panel fixes into the wing, that's not a problem. But there's no attachment to speak of uh, at the front and the back of the panel. So it's just a butt joint up to the existing fuselage wall. Uh, the problem with that, it was okay at the back here, the fit was fairly flush and I managed to get some contact between the two sides of the joint. The problem was at the front here because there was a gap of something like just less than a quarter of a millimetre actually. Uh, but it doesn't matter how tiny it was, if the parts aren't butting up to each other you're not going to be able to glue them. Or not with any strength anyway. So what I did was to fill the gap, pack it out with some quarter of a millimetre styrene strip. This is only half a millimetre wide, so you can't see it from the inside. I didn't want to be doing any correction work on the inside. Uh, so it doesn't actually appear on the inside of the bomb bay or the gum bay. And it's enough just to get a solid fixing of the uh, side panel with the front fuselage there. I used one of these spring clips to make sure that the fuselage was aligned properly at the front. And overall that's come out reasonably well. It's going to need a bit of tidying up. These joins at the back are nice and clean. They're not going to need much but this just needs sanding down at the front where the plastic strip is just protruding ever so slightly. That could have done really with a better method of fixing either an overlapping joint uh, or some pins or something to uh, make a more secure fit of that. The other problem I had in getting this front end to fix was that the side panel uh, was springing out slightly so it needed some pressure uh, applied with these spring clips to, to get them to line up properly. So uh, those joints are done. I'm going to have to clean them up a little bit. For the back, I've just got rid of the cement, excess cement with a fiberglass pencil. I like using these. Uh, I got them originally for cleaning brass and solder up. But they also do a great job on plastic, getting rid of excess glue. It doesn't scratch the plastic or mar it. It's a really nice, smooth... Uh, sanding action. So I use this quite a lot now, it's quite a good find. I'll check these joints with some uh, primer just to make sure that I've got them how I want them. Certainly the uh, one at the back isn't going to need much more work, I think we've got a bit more to do on the front. Uh, but I'll get round to that over the next few days. I'm just smoothing down the edges of the styrene strip where it's protruding a little bit, just a tiny amount. Just using a round blade just to clean that off. And as far as I can tell without primer, uh, that looks as close as I can get it at the moment. So we'll just have to see what it looks like under a coat of paint. It might need a little bit more work, or I might have got away with it, I don't know. I sanded down all this rear part of the fuselage uh, last week, or the week before I think. So I'll just finish off in this area by fitting this panel first of all.
And the last thing I'm going to do this week is to sort the uh, chin plate out, which is this part. It obviously has the openings for the 20mm cannon muzzles. So I'll get those together. So we've got two parts to this, the gaps are filled in. with this plate that uh, forms the, I suppose, the blast tubes at the front of the nose. Now Tamiya provide a set of uh, gun barrels to fit like that. And I've got a set of master gun barrels. I really got them for the .303s machine guns in the nose. But I noticed that we also get some 20mm cannon barrels. So I'll just have a look at those. I'll just see if these are any better or significantly better than the uh, Tamiya parts. We'll do the machine guns uh, in another episode when I fit the nose gun bay out. They're a definite improvement. The machine guns are a definite improvement on the Tamiya parts. They've got the cooling jackets with the slots in them. So I'm sure they'll be much better. And you also get a pitot tube for the tail. So these are the cannons. So this is a thing where I know that these are brass but I don't see a significant improvement of those over the Tamiya parts. And the other difficulty with them is locating them because for the outboard ones they're the same length as the Tamiya barrel or just about. So the problem would be getting all of these to line up accurately and making them all point forward, whereas you've already got that with the Tamiya part. They're all perfectly aligned. And I just think that whatever benefit you might think there is with the turned barrels, in fact that one's got a flaw in the end of it, so it's not even round at the end. So I'm going to scrap those. I'm not going to bother with them at all. And I'll just paint the Tamiya plastic barrels up. And fit them like that. And they'll look perfectly good. The chances are I wouldn't be able to get these brass ones to align in exactly the same way as that plastic part does not without a lot of fiddling around anyway and it's just not worth it for uh, what they are. As I said the 3 or 3s are a different matter, they're a big improvement and I will be using those. So in terms of getting this ready to fit to the aeroplane we obviously have to fit these gun barrels before fitting the plate but to do that I want to paint at least the blast tube area in the underside colour and obviously the uh, cannon barrels fit all those together and then I can just mask them off. I'll put some uh, blue tack or something like that to mask them off whilst I paint the underside when I come to do that. So that's the next step. Okay, whilst I've been painting these parts, so this is the plate covered in uh, medium sea grey, the underside colour. I'm using Tamiya acrylics uh, for that. There's a new or a relatively new line of RAF colours from Tamiya 
in the XF range. So that's uh, medium sea grey. And the guns or the muzzles are painted to match the cannons that we fitted last week. So whilst I've been painting these up, I've just been thinking about how I'm going to go about doing this and I'm not going to fix this just yet. Because what I want to do is uh, get a consistent weathering of this plate with the rest of the fuselage. Uh, so I'll paint it all together, but I'm just going to position it loosely while I'm painting the underside. And what I'll be able to do then is just pop the plate off. Uh, fit the guns after I've done all the weathering and some uh, cannon uh, staining, some gun staining uh, around this area because obviously it's far too clean at the moment. So I think that's a plan. So this will just be fixed in position like that temporarily. I'll uh, paint the fuselage including this plate again, do all the weathering uh, pop it off, fix the guns and put the plate back on. I think that should work. But that's more or less what it's going to look like when it's finished. Except a lot dirtier. I've got a photograph actually. And the one that appears at the end of the video showing Picard and Broadley standing in front of the Mosquito. You can see quite heavy gun staining on the uh, underside of the nose. So uh, I'll be doing that and obviously it'll carry backwards onto the uh, cannon bay doors and possibly even further back onto the bomb bay doors. So uh, looking for a consistent weathering finish there. So I'll leave this off. Just to finish off the underside, I'll just pop in these underside panels or fairings around the tailwheel. Okay, so uh, that's the underside finished apart from the navigation lights, uh, the lenses at least that we have to fit, and obviously the uh, gun and bomb bay doors. So that's uh, decent progress for this week, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so that's the underside uh, done, the bomb bay and cannon bay finished off. We've got the bombs to do yet, but as I said earlier on in the video, I'm going to be using some uh, aftermarket bombs to replace the ones in the Tamiya kit. And we'll have a look at those uh, when they arrive. They might be here today, maybe tomorrow, but uh, we'll have a look at them as soon as they come. And I'll talk a little bit about the Amiens raid as well, uh, and the bomb loadout of the Mosquitoes uh, on that particular mission. Next week in part 13 I'm going to have to move forward and probably do the uh, 303 machine gun bay in the nose of the aeroplane, get the front of the aeroplane finished off. And that's going to be my one and only target for next week. So uh, we'll be doing that as usual on Friday night. It'll be a premiere for the nose gun bay, but we'll have a quick review of the uh, model design construction uh, bombs. That's the manufacturer. Uh, when they arrive and that's probably going to be over the weekend sometime so a little bit of a video in between the next proper episode of the build series. So part 13 coming up as usual next Friday at 8 o'clock as a premiere so hopefully I'll see you for that one. In the meantime everybody look after yourself, stay safe, enjoy your modelling and I'll see you in another few days time. Bye for now.